Hi, my name is uh, Chengu. Um, my real name is Abid Ali Chengezi. Uh, Chengu comes from Chengezi, which is my tribal name. I am half Mongol and half Persian, uh, but I was born and raised in Pakistan. Basically, my ethnicity, my Mongol ethnicity, is that we are descendants of the great warrior Chengiz Khan. My tribal name Chengizi comes from Chengiz Khan, basically. So um, my best friend started calling me Chengu, and that's how I got my name. And it was much more funkier, basically, to be introducing myself with that name. I belong to Quetta. Quetta is a really tiny, used to be a valley um, in the province of Balochistan, um, which is the biggest province in Pakistan. Um, uh, now it's a very developed city, but still quite small and very conservative in terms of my lifestyle, basically. So the tribe that I belong to in Quetta, um, we are um, called Hazaras and some people mistake that um, with the Hazara division which is further in the in another province in the country but we're not from that division. Um, Hazaras are basically like I mentioned um, descendants of Genghis Khan um, and they come from um, predominantly they come from Afghanistan. Um, ethnically my um, um, background is half Persian and half Mongol so um, the half Afghan part, um, half Mongol part comes from Afghanistan basically. And so a lot of my ancestors um, were from Afghanistan. They migrated to Pakistan, um, but they dropped by in Iran, married women there and brought them down to Pakistan. So this was more than a hundred years ago. Um, my grandparents, my parents and myself, we were all born raised in Pakistan. So we were there even before Pakistan was Pakistan because um, Pakistan came into being in 1947 um, but we were there for all this time um, so Pakistan is a very diverse um, group of you know na um, ethnicities and um, cultures and my culture is basically we are a huge minority um, so we're predominantly settled in the city of Quetta what Chengiz Khan was doing was he wanted to conquer the world and a lot of my ancestors were warriors um, They were fighters. So on top of being a minority in terms of race and ethnicity We are also a minority in terms of the sect of Islam that we follow. Hazaras are uh, mostly Shias and um, Shias are being targeted. Uh, Shias and Sunnis are two major sects in Islam who have had clashes and um, you know conflicts throughout time. Um, that is also how I lost my father uh, when I was two years old. Um, my father passed away. He was actually shot in one of the protests that the Shias were doing um, against the government. Um, and there was a lot of violence involved. It was This was back in 1985 and uh, that's how I lost my father and it's it's something that has come back now and it has come back with a lot more aggression um, so I'm losing friends family friends um, really close friends um, every other day it's it's absolutely ridiculous what's going on back home All that is really, it's really hard. It's really hard to even imagine that that the hometown that I was, that I grew up in, has come to this day. Um, and I recently did lose um, a second cousin, who was, who was coming back from, um, who was coming back from from Iraq, she, she went out there with her mom um, for a religious uh, pilgrimage, basically. And uh, when she was coming back, they were all, um, all these people were shot. Um, they fired, they opened fired on the bus and she passed away. So, um, yeah, so we hear these stories almost every day. Um, and it's really hard. It's extremely hard um, to know that we are here having such a quality life 
in Canada, um, whereas my relatives and you know friends and family friends are still back home and they're facing all this hardship. Um, so it's 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 quite hard to cope up with that. The three best things about Quetta um, are the fresh water, the air, and the mountains. These are the three things that I really, really miss about, about my hometown. And my childhood growing up in Quetta was, was just amazing. It was so beautiful. Most of that was because of, of my family, the amazing family that I, that I grew up with. I had 40 cousins, first cousins. It, it, was, it was crazy growing up. We, we had a joint family system and it was absolutely amazing. Um, fighting together with cousins and living together, playing games, studying, going out for trips. And um, honestly, the kind, of, the kind of childhood that I've had um, I, am, I feel extremely blessed and very fortunate that I was born, raised in, in a family like that. My family was extremely liberal in terms of how we grew up together. Um, in, a, in a traditional Hazara family, um, there, there aren't a lot of interaction or um, a lot of friendship between male and female cousins, um, basically. But I grew up dancing with my cousins. We partied. Um, it was it was absolutely unheard of, to be to be honest. When when my friends would when when I would talk about my cousins to my friends, and they would be they would actually be shocked to to even to even know that something like that even existed. 
um, but I had an amazing time with my cousins. It's just um, just something that something that's a part of me, something that you cannot ever forget, kind of a thing. Um, like I mentioned, we went out for picnics and there was this one spot which is just a, like a couple of hours away, uh, outside of Quetta. And we used to go there two or three times a year, um, especially during the summer. And it's this absolutely gorgeous place where there's like um, water coming out of, a, out of a mountain and it has a huge lake and a, like, a, like a pool, like a natural pool, um, amazing fresh water. Uh, that we went out and we we used to go we used to all go there um, and it was a huge family picnic that we used to have twice or three times a year so these are these are memories that that I still have of Quetta and I moved to Canada six years ago it was basically because of the religious intolerance that my community was facing um, because we belong to the Shia sect Quetta today is absolutely nothing um, what it was um, when I was growing up. Um, yes, things started to get um, worse when while I was there, but but what but what it was six years ago and what it is now is still a huge a huge contrast. Um, it's really it's it's opposites. So what's happening now is there's there's no there's no more family picnics going on it's just people are scared to even go out of their houses um when when they leave in the, when men leave in the morning for their work or even girls when they when they leave um in the morning you you don't know if they're gonna come back home alive I have been dancing since I was three years old and the first memory that I have is of that time. It was my dad's cousin's wedding and I was dancing 
in front of the a band that was beating the drums and uh, I was just following the band and I was just going behind whatever the sound was taking me and it was it was so funny because my uncle was watching me of course he was keeping an eye on me there's this three-year-old kid who's just dancing and doesn't know what's going on around him um, so it, it, was, it happened so that the band went to the left and the, the wedding party was towards the right and I followed the band to the left so it was quite funny and I actually have a really um, good memory of that. I, I always keep telling my mom that that was a huge sign for you to have realized that your son is going to be a dancer. I just cannot help myself when I, when I, when I listen to music, especially when it's drums, um, I hear my blood pumping, I can actually feel my blood pumping. So that's the extent to which I'm, I'm so passionate about dance. It started when I was three years old. Um, connecting that with, with, my, with my community and uh, with the society that I belong to, um, which I mentioned was that it's quite conservative. Um, it was all fun and games until I was a kid, but when I, when I was growing up, um, especially my um, early teen years, um, it was quite hard because I was I started getting a lot of resistance from the community, from my family, from um, religion uh, to stop it because boys don't dance. It's a very taboo thing for boys to be dancing. Um, so then my mom, um, she was getting a lot of pressure um, from um, from my relatives um, that he needs to stop um, because it's going to bring a bad name to the to the family. I was. I was kind of like the black sheep. I was always the black sheep. Um, so, my mom would would always she would try to convince me uh, to stop it, but there was I just couldn't. I just really couldn't. If if anything, I would just lock myself up, up in my room and and I would just dance. I'd put my music on and uh, just jam to my music, and that would be it. Um, besides that, I I think a lot of a lot of what I do right now and the confidence where I got my confidence from was from my teachers in school. Um, I was a part of every single cultural show, every single event uh, that was going on. Um, I was the most popular kid in school um, and they loved me. My, my music teacher loved me, my dance teacher loved me and not that we actually had a dance teacher, but um, but teachers who were organizing these events, they loved me because because I was the only boy who could dance and I could dance well and I enjoyed it. So um, it was quite interesting. Um, I danced and I was singing, I was doing plays, I was acting um, throughout my entire school life up to high school. Um, it was not until university that, um, of course, like I mentioned, was that I got to, I, I had to face a lot of resistance in terms of not to do it. Um, but I never gave up. It was, it was something that I just couldn't stop doing. So, um, Hazaras as a community are absolutely not dancers. Um, they are musicians, yes. Um, they love music. Um, they are artists, um, mostly, mostly artists who can draw and paint. Um, they really, really appreciate that kind of art. But dance is never, ever encouraged. Um, and I have had a lot of friends and students, basically, in, in the past decade and more than a decade, have been, um, have been going to all these art universities around the country. So National College of Arts in Lahore, um, Pakistan uh, School of Fashion Design in Lahore, na, um, the Indus Valley School of Arts in Karachi. So all these Hazara students are going for these um, for these professions and these fields um, where they are becoming fashion designers, they're becoming artists, they're becoming virtual artists, they're becoming musicians, photographers, amazing photographers, and but I do not know a single Hazara who is a dancer. 
I grew up um, in a Muslim household and I believe Islam is a beautiful religion. It gives a message of peace. And when I was growing up, um, like I mentioned, in it was early in my teenage years, um, my community, my relatives started giving me religious references on why I should give up dance and how it was okay to do it when I was a kid, but it's not okay anymore and I just could not understand it. It was my, it was beyond my comprehension um, that something so beautiful um, could be could be seen as as bad. So it was just it was really hard for me to be to be struggling with that, but I, I did not give up on that. Um, my mom was really upset. she was really worried about it um, because she was getting all the all the resistance basically she was getting all this um, um, you know talks from my family uh, that you need to you need to stop him you need to talk to him you need to make him stop basically um, so when when I was growing up I was following I was following Islam I was doing everything that a good Muslim should do and I did not see why or how dance can influence or make any any difference in my life as a Muslim. Um, so it was, I just didn't understand it basically. So I never gave up on it. I took, I took a lot of interest in Sufism. Um, Sufism is also a sect of Islam, which is not very well known um, because of its openness. Um, Sufis are extremely peaceful people. The message of Sufism, basically Sufism is mystic Islam and it's all loving, all accepting. Um, it's just open to to everyone. Um, so, and there's a lot of Sufi music that helped me in, in growing um, in, my, in my dance and in my passion for dance. Sufi music really helped me um, in finding my spirituality and uh, my connection with 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 Allah. And uh, this is this is um, a gift that my mom just gave me. It says Allah in Arabic. And um, so basically, what I started exploring was um, all these amazing messages um, from all these philosophers and. Um, Islamic scholars who lived in you know centuries ago and these Kavalis that are talking about um, all these um, stories that happened in the past and how one can connect with uh, with God through music. Sufism to me was 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 kind of like a lifesaver um, and I realized there's this one verse in the Quran um, that says Innam al amalu binyat which means your actions depend, how your actions are going to be judged by God will depend on what your intentions were when you were doing those actions. Um, so that brought a lot of peace to my heart, knowing that when I'm dancing, I'm not hurting anyone. When I'm dancing, I'm actually bringing smiles on people's faces. I'm actually creating this amazing um, environment um, where people are just enjoying when they're watching me perform. I wanted to take my dance practice to another level and I wanted to do that by becoming more flexible. And so I started doing yoga for the first time in my life. This was two years ago. And I started doing hot yoga and specifically Bikram yoga. And 
not only did yoga help me with my with my flexibility, um, but it helped me grow spiritually as well. Um, I could see so many improvements in various aspects of my life. I became more um, patient with myself. I became more non-judgmental towards myself. So, Islam is Islam is a message of peace, and I think you cannot. Be peaceful unless you're at peace with yourself. You cannot preach the message of peace unless you're peaceful with yourself. And when I dance, I'm at peace. Toronto is such an amazing city. When I moved here, it was uh, absolutely everything that I could ever dream of in terms of um, all these opportunities to take with dance, dance classes, dance companies, um, art shows and whatnot. So I was just talking to a, um, to a friend of mine a couple of days ago and um, I mentioned to him that the quality of life that I've had in the past two years is so much more compared to what I've ever had before. It's because I've been doing what I've always loved to do, what I've always wanted to do, and I definitely could not ever have been able to do it without the support of my friends and friends who have supported me, who have really had faith in me that whatever I'm doing is, is amazing. Jungu believes in change, so he's constantly evolving. And I've always admired him and appreciated him for the fact that he takes to dance in a way that doesn't just change himself, but it changes everything around him. He becomes the change that he wants to be. And I think as time goes on, his name will be timeless. That's how I'll always remember Changezi. I met Changezi about four years ago through a common friend at York University. He has that passion in him. And as I followed him in the past two to three years, I saw him grow. I saw him follow his dreams, chase them. And he is truly my inspiration. Well, as a person, uh, Changezi is a joyful and happy-go-lucky guy. Uh, he likes to keep everyone happy. He's, uh, he loves to socialize a lot. And uh, uh, he's an easygoing person and likes to mingle with people among all age groups. Uh, but uh, sometimes I think he's a bit selfish uh, in the sense that uh, what he wants to achieve, he goes for it whether he gets the support required or not. But uh, to some extent, I think it's pretty much good that if you want something, you have to become selfish for it. On the other hand, he is uh, extremely caring and uh, a kind person for his loved ones. And uh, last but not the least, he is most, uh, he is extremely talented and artistic as well. And uh, this can also be seen in the present work he is performing, that is dance. And he truly loves to express his feelings through dance. Unfortunately, uh, dance is not uh, being supported in Pakistani culture. People bear it only on the wedding on these sorts of situations, that's it. And uh, that is why we have only selected and uh, famous dancers like uh, Ghulam Maharaja, Ghulam Hussain Khatak and uh, Nigar Chaudhary and Nahid Siddiqui etc. And only specific class supports them. So, uh, but I think, uh, those dances should be encouraged that depicts a story, a feeling and above all give a positive message to people. And uh, I would say a positive change in perceptions of Pakistanis is essentially required regarding dance. Did Changezi dance as a child? I think uh, more interestingly, do you think he's not a child anymore? Well, jokes apart, uh, um, I, he oh, he did. He mentioned that he danced as, as a child, but uh, to me what lingered more importantly is how he was not allowed um, in the society that he lived in to dance as a child and even as a boy. I think uh, his dancing career really took off when he went away from Pakistan because Pakistan as a society labels men 
uh, they are allowed to dance in free flow and to have fun in clubs and parties and whatever not. But should they ever take, God forbid, dance as a serious form, as a form of art or as a form of something to be actually pursued in a career, you will find very, very few of them here. And so I think it's part of this, this side of Chengezi that true art was quite subsided and really suppressed here. Uh, and I think he had to sort of pretty much keep it in the closet um, and not really show its true colors. So he did dance, yes, but uh, only when he was amongst people he was comfortable with. Uh, I know he started taking dance classes here in Pakistan, and I was one of the students because as soon as he uh, took the dance classes, he was so good at it that he became a teacher of dance, and I was one of his few first salsa students, very hopeless one, of course, and did not do too well, but yes. Um, when you ask me about uh, what message to give about, to Pakistanis about dance, I am first thinking about where, what state is Pakistan in right now and where is it headed. And dance of all things, where, what is the future of dance in Pakistan? I was recently at Nai Siddiqui's dance performance of uh, Baba Bulisha's Kalam. And there was no music, just very background, basic, just a harmonium perhaps, and more so just a recital of uh, her partner's voice. But the thing is, we have to, as Pakistanis, please understand that dance is an art. It's just expression, like Kathak say, it's just storytelling. And, and who says that when my hands are not movement, uh, moving, it's not a dance, or when my eyes are not laughing, it's not dancing. So I, I'm, I'm imploring on Pakistanis to not stereotype dancing as, as something in their heads, as a vulgar form of uh, nudity or uh, nudity for that matter. It's not. It's dance in the spirit form. It's just art. It's just a movement of uh, the resources. It, it's this movement of our bodies, and it's beautiful, and to recognize it as that. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. My name Qazi Ahmed Nurani Siddiqui. At the moment, the country's Prime Minister, the Prime Minister of the United جمعیت علماء پاکستان کراچی کی صدارتی ذمہ داری مجھ پر ہے اور خود جامعہ کراچی سے کراچی یونیورسٹی سے پی ایچ ڈی کر رہا ہوں ایم فل کا مقالہ مکمل ہو چکا ہے اور بس تھوڑی سی مصوفیات جلد سے جلوسوں کی حائل ہو رہی ہیں ورنہ امید ہے کہ اسی سال میں میرا پی ایچ ڈی مکمل ہو جائے گا نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم نے فرمایا کہ جس نے نیکی کی بنیاد رکھی جب تک وہ نیک عمل ہوتا رہے گا اس کے نامۂ اعمال میں نیکیاں لکھی جاتی رہیں گی اور جس نے کسی برائی کی بنیاد رکھی جب تک وہ برائی ہوتی رہے گی نامۂ اعمال میں وہ برائیاں لکھی جاتی رہیں گی اب اگر ایک ڈوم یا ڈومنی اردو کا لفظ ہے رقاصہ کے لیے اگر ڈوم یا ڈومنی کوئی ناچ گانے کا کام کرتے ہیں انہوں نے ایک بار معاوضہ لیا اور ختم ہو گیا لیکن ڈائریکٹر پروڈیوسر اسے بیسوں سال چلاتے رہیں گے تو جتنے افراد اسے دیکھ کے بگڑیں گے جتنی بار سنیں گے وہ سارے گناہ ان کے نامہ اعمال میں لکھے جائیں گے ارینج کروانے والا کرنے والا اسٹیج شو ہو یا دیگر شو ہوں وہ سیاسی جماعت کرے وہ کوئی گروہ کرے وہ کوئی گروپ کرے ووٹ لینے کے لیے کرے یا کسی خوشی میں کرے کسی موقع پر کرے نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم نے ڈھول کی آواز جب آئی تو اپنے کانوں میں انگلیاں ڈال لیں اور کہا جو موسیقی کو سنے گا اس کے کانوں میں سیسا پگلا کے ڈال دیا جائے گا تو آخرت میں ان سب رقص کرنے والوں کا انجام برا ہوگا اور جہنم کا شکار ہوں گے بٹ اب تو یہ ٹرینڈ ہو گیا ہر کوئی اپنی سپیریورٹی کو اور اچھے پن کے میوزک ہی سمجھتا ہے تو مجھے لگتا ہے کہ یہ جو میوزک آج کل بج رہا ہے بیسکلی دیٹس ناٹ دا ریئل میوزک جو ریئل میوزک تھا وہ کلاسیکل میوزک تھا جو اب پہلے سے چلایا جاتا تھا اب تو یہ ڈسکو دھمچک دھام مچا رہا ہے یہ میوزک تھوڑی ہے یہ مسئلہ تھوڑی ہے یہ ٹوٹلی ایک خراب چیز کو آپ ایک اچھا نام دے کے لوگوں میں عام کرنے کی کوشش کرتے ہیں ڈانس میں بھی کرتا ہوں میں یہ نہیں کہہ رہا کہ میں ڈانس نہیں کرتا میں بھی کرتا ہوں پر ڈانس کے بھی ٹائپس ہوتے ہیں ایک ڈانس ہوتا ہے جو مطلب لوگوں کو اچھا لگتا ہے لوگوں کو مطلب پلیزنٹ لگتا ہے اپنے مائنڈس پہ دوسرا آتا ہے جو صرف اپنی پاپولیرٹی کے لیے ہوتا ہے جیسے لڑکیاں آج کل کر رہی ہیں آپ سب نے دیکھا ہوگا وہ ڈانس ایکچولی مطلب نہیں ہے سوسائٹی کے لیے ڈانس جو ہوتا ہے وہ ایکچولی دو اس کے ٹائپس ہوتے ہیں اور 
जो सही वाला डांस होता है जो मतलब वो बहुत रेयर हो, हो, होता जा रहा है आजकल और मैं भी डांस करता हूँ ये नहीं कह रहा कि मैं डांस नहीं करता लेकिन थोड़ा लिमिट से क्रॉस नहीं होना चाहिए डांस मेरे खास रिलैक्सेशन है मतलब जिसम की और थोड़े इन्जॉयमेंट हो जाता है दोस्तों वगैरह में बिल्कुल अच्छा है डांस से हम अपनी फीलिंग एक्सप्रेस कर सकते हैं और सॉन्ग्स वगैरह सुन के माइंड हल्का होता है इसलिए सॉन्ग सुनने चाहिए म्यूज़िक बहुत अच्छा लगता है म्यूज़िक से दिल को सुकून मिलता है As far as the music is concerned, I think uh, most of the people in the world actually feel music is good. You know, it's just uh, you know, it just give you less stress. They just uh, make you you know make you feel better. Whatever if you're just feeling pensive. Or जहाँ तक dance की बात है तो I think ये मेरे ख्याल में dance भी बहुत सारे आजकल तो जो हम exercise भी करते हैं तो वो it's sort of dance actually. तो मेरे ख्याल में dance भी आजकल तो बहुत important हो गया है लेकिन क्योंकि हम एज ए मुस्लिम है तो मेरे ख्याल में हम उस कैटेगरी में नहीं आते कि डांस को मैं सेप कर सकें म्यूजिक भी बहरहाल नहीं आती लेकिन बहरहाल ये कि म्यूजिक जो है वो मैं समझता हूँ फिर भी बेहतर है कंपेरेटिवली डांस दैट जिस गिव यू यू नो जिस चेंज ऑफ चेंज ऑफ माइंड चेंज ऑफ मूड म्यूजिक म्यूजिक मेरा पैशन है म्यूजिक जिंदगी है म्यूजिक लाइफ है म्यूजिक एक्सप्रेशन है म्यूजिक आपकी जिंदगी का बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट हिस्सा है आप म्यूजिक को सुने म्यूजिक को फैलाएं क्योंकि म्यूजिक से आप प्यार मोहब्बत का मैसेज बांट रहे हैं फैला रहे हैं देखें जी हमारी सोसाइटी में मसला ये है कि जो रिलीजियस एलिमेंट है हमारी सोसाइटी का वो सोसाइटी को इस हद तक इन्फ्लुएंस करता है कि सोसाइटी में रहने वाले दूसरे लोग फ्री नहीं हैं अपने एक्सप्रेशन का इजहार करने में फॉर इंस्टेंस अगर आर्ट की सूरत में देखा जाए डांस को तो ये लोगों के पास चॉइस होनी चाहिए कि अगर वो डांस को एज आर्ट परफॉर्मिंग आर्ट अडोप्ट करना चाहें प्रैक्टिस करना चाहें तो वो कर सकें लेकिन अनफॉर्चुनेटली हमारी सोसाइटी में क्योंकि रिलीजस एलिमेंट का इन्फ्लुंस बहुत ज़्यादा है और वो इस हद तक है कि वो थ्रेटनिंग हद तक है यानी कि वो फिज़िकल अब्यूज़ के ऊपर भी उतर आते हैं एट टाइम्स आपके इस डांस परफॉर्मेंस को या म्यूज़िक को रोकने के लिए इस्पेशली रिसेंटली अगर आपने देखा होगा जो अभी सिचुएशन चल रही है उसमें इस किस्म की मैसेजेस मिल रहे हैं कि जी म्यूज़िक को बंद होना चाहिए म्यूज़िक सिस्टम नहीं होना चाहिए तो ये सब चीज़ें जो हैं डिसक्रेज करती हैं हमारी सोसाइटी में तो मेरे ख़्याल में ये नहीं होना चाहिए उसकी वजह ये है कि कोई भी सोसाइटी किसी एक डायमेंशन पे सरवाइव नहीं कर सकती इसको मल्टी डायमेंशनल होना चाहिए इसके कलर होने चाहिए और लोगों को फ्रीडम होना चाहिए कि वो अडोप्ट कर सकें जो भी प्रोफेशन या जो भी उनकी हॉबीज़ हैं तो म्यूज़िक और डांस के हवाले से मुझे यही कहना है माई लाइफ रिवॉल्व अराउंड डांस एवरी थिंग आई डू आई डू इट विद अ माइंड सेट ऑफ हाउ इज दिस गोइंग टू इम्प्रूव मी एज अ डांसर एज अ परफॉर्मर एज अ कोरियोग्राफर एंड इन कैनेडा आई थिंक आई स्टार्टेड माई डांस करियर विद स्टूडेंट क्लब्स एट यूर्क यूनिवर्सिटी Um, but from York University, I think I got that confidence. Um, just seeing how it was, the 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 art industry in Toronto, and uh, testing the waters. And I joined um, a dance company, and then I joined a dance theater company. So just starting taking baby steps. Besides that, I joined um, the Miss Pakistan World, and I choreograph. I do the pageant show choreography, basically, for and I did that for 2012, 2013, and I'm on board again for this year. So I'm really excited about that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. It's just you're standing in the line, but when you're coming, you're still coming in the same direction.
I must say that the pageant show really did open up a lot of other opportunities for me in the South Asian community um, especially because that brought in a lot of interest in people wanting to see me perform um, classical or folk Pakistani Sufi dances so these were kind of different flavors that that I wanted to show and people wanted to see I have come a long way, I really have, and, and I really admire the struggle that I've, that I've been through. And so when you struggle for something and when you're so close to achieving it, it becomes even more valuable to you. I really wish that somehow I could take all of this and convince people back home that, you know, dance is something that you don't just do for entertainment you just you don't just do for the sake of i don't know to perform at a wedding or you know something like that there's so much more to it there's so much more meaning into it i really want to take the dance message back home to pakistan and to encourage all those people who want to pursue dance that yes they can it's it's sad but i really i feel like i want to do something that can change that i want to do something that can make a difference and make people see and convince them that yes dance is so much more than just shaking your body i wish that people would also also be able to see that just because you're a dancer does not mean that you cannot be a good muslim and i really i really hope that it can it can create a social change you know it can start something that is going to be a part of a huge revolution back home
सावन भी तो जाए हर सावन भी तो जाए हर मन मेरा घबराए मन मेरा घबराए सो गए पर देश पिया तुम ऐसो गए पर देश पिया तुम चैन हमें नहीं आए चैन हमें नहीं आए मोरा सैया मुसे बोले ना मोरा सैया मुसे बोले ना मैं लाख जतन कर हारी लाख जतन कर हार रही मोरा सैया मुसे बोले Say, boy. 